how did I meet Juwan Williams? Juwan was a middle school football player, this missing gray kid, and I was actually going to watch a middle school football game, and he kind of stood out like a sore thumb. Making the transition from being in a metro public school to being at a, at a private school and then a predominantly white private school, there were some, there were some struggles just, just in the adjustment. My name is Greg Carson. I teach economics and biology here at Father Allen High School. All right, uh, I understand you had Juwan as a student. What grade did you have? I had him both as a freshman football player and as a sophomore student All right. in my economics class. So I know Juwan, he didn't really start out as a star. He kind of evolved into a star over time. Right. So what, did you see any change in him through freshman not, not really. I mean, he was a good ball player, but he, there was nothing that would make me think he would be playing for the New England Patriots. For me, everything is a process. You take it one day at a time. Whether that's you got a goal you want to reach, something you want to set, just take it one step at a time. Look at each day as a mission to accomplish. The, sh the short term stuff is going to get you to the long. We'll go over the playbook like now, bro. I know the back end so well. We've been going on D line shit just because, like. So I'm actually, I'm very excited about this year, bro. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a good, it's gonna be a good year. We'll be moving around everywhere. What drew you to Father Ryan? Um, what drew me to Father Ryan? Um. I mean, I would say it was a, it was a unique, it was just a unique opportunity for me, just coming from where I came from, and you know, um, just to have a. I just remember being in eighth grade, being like really excited, just to have even like a, a private school like send me like a little pamphlet, uh, the little, the little info thing that they have, and yeah. so um, and just coming from where I come from, like you don't, we don't really, we don't really have that, so. Um, I was just super excited. That's that's. I mean, that was kind of my honest. I've never experienced anything about like you know um, being at a private school or anything just like that. So I was just super excited. And once uh, once I saw Father Ryan, I was just I kind of was like, yeah, this is where I want to be. Who were some of the people at Father Ryan that you think influenced you the most? Oh man, uh, Coach Carson. Um, Coach Carson was a really was a really cool dude. I I, I love that guy, man. I remember um, one time I was throwing like a pity fit my freshman year in practice, and um, and uh, I was just I was mad at something, and he just pulled me to the side and was talking to me, and then he was telling me about um, you know he has like a little heart problem, yeah, and uh, he was like. He was like, if you're not going, if you're not going to practice today for yourself, practice for me then. And he was telling me all about himself and his story, and I was like, I got you, I got you. And so no, uh, and he's always, he's just always been a, he's always been really cool to me, especially with uh, his financial literacy class uh, when I took it my junior year. It kind of, I mean, he changed my life too. As a freshman, I've read that he didn't really stand out. He was just average. He was just an average player. I mean, he was a good ball player, but he was, like I said, nothing to, you know, no nothing spectacular. Coach Cole, my dog, Aww. Coach Cole. Yes, Coach Cole. Yeah, we love Coach Cole. <laughs> Coach Cole, that is my dog, man. Shout out to Coach Cole. Um, uh, he was he was really cool. He was really cool too, man. He was always he was just always trying to get me better, always in my corner. And um, so it was much appreciated, especially my freshman year coming in. Um, he was a really, he was a really good dude, man. He, man, I just remember like even even then, everybody had to like order like football cleats, and uh, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any money to order cleats like that. And so he just like he was like, look, we go. I'm a, I'm a. I'm a go into the EQ room and I'm gonna look for some what's your size I'm gonna get make sure you I'm gonna make sure you're straight and so gave me a couple pair of cleats make sure I was good for my good for my freshman year and uh he's always just been looking out for me too man coach shout out coach code man I miss him you stated that father Ryan was mm -hmm. a culture shock for you it motivated you to become financially successful how important was this revelation and how much do you credit your success to that time in your life Mm. Um, I, I mean, just overall, um, 
I credit a lot. I, I credit a lot of the person I am today um, to that time, that time period in my life and that transition in my life. Uh, just growing up and um, growing up in very low, you know, low income uh, communities. Just growing up in the projects in Nashville and then being able to see something, um, see something completely different. Um, really drove me really drove me to want to get to that position in life and I remember I would go over friends cribs and stuff like that and they had like really big cribs and um, I would always ask their parents like hey what did you major in in college just to, just to get a, just to get a sense of like what do I need to do to what do I need to do to get to that what what do I need to do to get there and so um, it really just motivated me to just stay on the right path because I mean, it was it was it was difficult for me when I would go I would go to school and have this have this good community and good things to you know really look look up to and follow. But also the thing is, when I go home, I never had that. I still had the same friends I grew up with. I still had the same community, the same environment that I grew up in. And so it was completely it was completely night and day every day. And so, uh, Father Ryan really helped, like being at Father Ryan really helped me keep my head on straight and stay motivated. And to, because it kept showing me there's better things and there's better things. And I remember my sophomore year when everybody turned 16 and everybody got cars. Yeah. And everybody, everybody's driving the cars now. And, um, I never had, I never had a car, but I'll see everybody with their cars. And again, it just, it just motivated me. Yeah, it, I mean, it was hard to it was hard to go through, but at the end of the day, still, I, I channeled that into motivation. So um, that 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 plays a that plays a major factor of why I'm here today. So, what do you think has changed between your freshman and your senior season that helped you become the athlete you are today? Uh, freshman and senior season uh, in high school. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, freshman year, I mean. Uh, and you're saying freshman and senior season for like football wise, or yeah, just yeah, oh, football, football wise. wise? Perfect. Um, well, freshman year uh, it was very, it was very humbling because um, <laughs> I didn't play, um, I didn't play uh, varsity, and so I was very, I was kind of, I was kind of, I was very pissed, like very mad about that. Um, but I just kept trying to play. I was because I was like. I was like, man, I came in with so much expectations that I was just like, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna come in, play varsity, do this, do that, like, just, like off the bat, off the jump, and that didn't happen uh, at all. But uh, it just showed me, it just showed me that there's a process to everything. Um, just like, just like what I'm going through right now. I mean, that whole process through our high school from from my freshman year to my well, junior year there and well, my senior year, um, senior season at the end of high school um, uh, to, to where I'm at now. It just shows that like wherever you go, it's a process and starting over um, and climbing that ladder um, to be one of the leaders on your team, to be one of the playmakers on your team. It's all a process. Um, things don't start off off the bat, and it and that's what she, that's what it showed me really. It just showed me really quick in high school where um, I was on the freshman squad. Uh, I wasn't playing varsity, and then um, my sophomore year, uh, I was on varsity, but I wasn't playing at all until like the end of the season. And then my junior year is kind of when everything took off, um, and that's that's kind of the same thing that happened in college where my freshman year I didn't play until. Um, I didn't play it. I just I didn't get into the rotation until the last few games of the uh, season, and then my sophomore year I started. But I mean, and I did some good things, but it wasn't to the level of where I wanted it to be. And then my junior year kind of exploded from there. So it kind of showed that this is all a process, and uh, that's what's helping keeping me focused on the NFL now. Is that everything's a process? Some people. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to get down on yourself. I think you see some people have early success. But uh, for me, this is always a marathon. My life has always been a marathon. And yeah, I want to just keep chugging along. And I'm here for the long run. So that's what it kind of, that whole thing kind of taught me. Big interception by you there at the end of the game. Can you kind of take me through that play? Uh, I, was in my, I was in my drop back. And then I just saw the, I saw the ball and I broke on it. And I was... 
went in and scored, and I was like, I was so relieved. We got to end the game easily. You guys had a big lead there, and then all of a sudden, BJ yeah. started making a good comeback. What's kind of going through your mind as they're coming yeah, back? Yeah, we, we had a lot of penalties, quite a lot of mistakes, and then we just didn't, we just didn't get a chance to, we just, we just didn't do, we just didn't do right like we did in the second, uh, first half. So, what well, we got back on here at the end of the game, and we powered through. We got to get way better. We got to work. We got to work this, uh, this week. We got a big game in BA, so it's going to be big. All right, uh, I'm trying to move on to your kind of Vanderbilt years, but uh, I know you had offers from other big football programs like LSU and Georgia. Like, what really went into your decision to go to Vanderbilt at the end of the day? Uh, it's funny because um, uh, it was just a. Uh, I always loved Vandy. I always loved going to Vandy, and I mean, I always supported them because it was a hometown team. Um, but I was fully committed to LSU and was planning on going to LSU. And I mean, I used to wear the, I was in high school wearing my little purple LSU hats and all that stuff. Like, I, man, I was, I was a LSU tiger the whole way. And, um, I just remember, um, I remember before, before I, before, before I didn't have offers in high school, like I always talked about going to Vandy. Like, I always want, like, because James Franklin was there and they were winning and they were doing, had, had, um, having some success. And um, the culture kind of there was changing. So I was, I, I, want, I always loved Bandy. Yeah. But um, when the recruiting process hit and I saw all these bigger schools and stuff like that, I kind of fell in love with that too. And I kind of, and that's how I kind of fell in love with LSU. And um, it was, it was funny uh, when I was taking my official, I had two officials left. One was uh, one was Bandy, and then LSU was on my birthday. Um, and I saved that one for last because that's when I was going like just openly like put it on social media that hey, I'm committed to LSU. And um, and so the Bandy visit was like a week before, and um, I just remember on the last day just talking to Coach Mason and um, something on my shoulder. Like I just really like he was he was giving his whole little recruiting spew and. For me, it was really just like something in the back of my head was telling me why he was talking. It was just like, hey, commit here. This is the spot for you. And I kind of just listened to the voice in my head. I literally cut him off in the middle of his speech. And I was like, hey, I'm committed here. This is where I want to be. And that's where it went from there. And um, by the grace of God, like, um, I'm in this position to this day. And so, I mean, that's what, and I look back on it and I feel like that was really God's voice. Uh, just speaking to me like, hey, this is this is the plan I want for you, and you know, and um, you'll be you'll be great here. You have, I mean, and so I, I listened to that. I listened to that little voice, and it, it just it took off from there. So um, no telling where I would have been if I would have still stuck with uh, LSU. But um, I'm here. I'm here to this day. I'm, I'm living my dream, and so I'm very I'm very happy about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mean most coaches get a chance to coach? You know, fortunately for me, I'd had a chance to coach one uh, some years earlier on Richard Sherman, and then I, I, I look up and almost, you know, man, man, some six six or seven years later, I'd have a chance to coach, you know, man, this special, unique guy by the name of Jawan Williams, who was the exact same. For him, every day was a fist fight. Every day was well, was about being competitive and being combative. That part is something that you can't teach somebody. Somebody either has it or they don't. They're gifted or they're not. They, they, they want to be great or they don't. And he wanted to be great. Next question is, uh, one of the most impressive things I've read about you is that you balanced incredible for- performances at Vandy with like honor roll uh, academic work. Like that's really impressive. How packed were your days and like what kept you motivated during that time? Uh, it was packed. It was packed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I would think there so. There was a lot of... There was a lot of caffeine uh, involved, um, and, and a lot of sleepless nights uh, involved. But um, but it was just it was just through through determination, and that was my biggest thing was to just to be the best I can be. What whatever that I whatever I decided to do, um, I tried I tried to be the best at it, and. Um, I mean, even I took I took school seriously. Uh, I, I value my education, and just again, it's all stems from it all stems from coming from where I come from. Um, it's just I wanted something better, 
and I know that having a great education, uh, having a great education would help. And so, um, yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of a lot of uh, sleepless nights at Vandy. Um, and I suck at writing papers, and my <laughs> my degree. My degree is just straight writing papers. I don't even know why uh, I did it. No, but, no, but, um, but um, I would. I really put in a. I really put in a lot of effort. Um, I had. I had a lot of. I had a lot of help too. I used my resources to my advantage, and um, and that's one thing that I just try to pride myself on is valuing my education. Um, so also, hey puppy. Sorry, my my dog. <laughs> don't worry about it. But um, yeah, um, it was just a, no. Hey, 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 hey! Shut up! Come on. But um, it was really just it was really just through a lot of just hard work, determination, and uh, a lot of effort just to to get through it all. But um, it was really overall the whole process was was just a blessing, and it overall just shows that I mean for me like just continuing the half faith, half hard work keep keep doing the right things and you know uh good things will come from that like what went into your decision like most athletes do okay yeah, yeah 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 so um i got you um but yeah so it was a whole process you know just talking to my, just talking to talking to my coach just talking to my, uh, to my mom um weaving through the agents and financial advisors that all would hit you up throughout that you know throughout that time period for that whole year pretty much and so um, it all came down to whatever my grade was going to be from the NFL uh, advisory, and um, they give you that. They give you that pretty much uh, at the end of your at the end of the regular season. And um, I was talking to my coach, and um, he was like, "If it says first or second round, uh, if you get a first or second round grade, I want you to go. And if, if anything higher than that, I'll I'll want you to stay." And um, and so uh, when the when the uh, when the grade came back, and he was like, he was like, you got a late first or second round grade. Yeah. I was like, deuces. <laughs> uh, I was like, yeah, that's pretty much a wrap. So, um, but I mean, they they tried their best to convince me to stay, but um, for me, I knew that I knew that I couldn't pass up on this opportunity. Um, and there was so much. There was so much that I wanted to do. This has been my dream since I was five years old, and this is an opportunity to also take care of my family um, in ways that I've always, I've always thought about. I've had a lot of sleepless nights um, just thinking about that, and so I had to jump at that opportunity and strike when the iron was hot. And so, um, yeah, I, at the, you talk about the Texas Bowl. I, I left for. Uh, Everybody hopped on the plane to go back to Nashville um, right after the Texas Bowl was over. I took a, I hopped on the plane and went to Arizona to go train. Like I was, <laughs> maybe like they were wondering where I was at. They you called, coach there. called me, and I was like, so I was like, uh, coach called me. He already knew what was up though. He was, he said, uh, as soon as I answered, um, he was like, he was like, uh, are you on a plane somewhere? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to Arizona. And then he was just, he supported me a hundred percent. And so um, he was happy for me. The uh, whole Vandy staff was happy for me. And so um, that's what kind of, and that's that's how that NFL process got started. Yeah. Um, last question, NFL wise. Uh, what was it like, like getting drafted in your hometown? Like that was just so coincidental that right when you get drafted, it's in Nashville. The Los Angeles Rams have traded the 45th pick to the New England Patriots. And with the 45th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the champs select Juwan Williams. Yeah! 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 Let's go! Yeah! Pass Nation, baby! Let's go, man. Let's go. Yeah, no, that was that was perfect. Uh, I remember I remember reading about it once it got announced the year before, and um, that's when I mean for me that's what kind of all that's what kind of all started um, uh, my motivation. Well, it didn't start my motivation. 
I take that back. But it, it influenced it. It influenced it heavily too, just because I was like, oh, it's in Nashville. I got to show out this yeah. year. Like, um, but um, it was it was just a overall. It was just a blessing. You get uh, for me. Like I look back on everything, man, and it, it how everything happened and how how I grew up in my life and everything that's happened from high school up in college and to um and now into the now into the pros even i mean getting drafted in my hometown is just all a blessing man that's all i can say about it man uh god's really been watching over me and um i'm just so appreciative and um i'm so appreciative of everything that's happened in my life and um yeah <laughs>